so important to just establish a study plan early on and do your best to like hold yourself accountable and stick to it. Cause mm -hmm. um, if not for that, I think it's really easy to let things slip and kind of push, push studying back for the MCAT. Dorothy, welcome to the MCAT podcast. How you doing? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. We've gone over starting kind of what we should be doing first year, second year. We are moving on to third year now as a junior. This is kind of when when I took the MCAT, wait, way back in the day. Um, <laughs> I was like, what is this MCAT thing as a junior? I'm like, I don't know what this is. I didn't have family who was in medicine. I was a first generation student trying to figure all of this out. So when you think of a junior, third year student, just starting out on their MCAT journey, does that scare you? Or is that like, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, so I was somewhat like you. No one in my family was in medicine. I also had to just bug my advisors all the time, figure out what the ideal timeline was for myself. Um, and I actually took my MCAT towards the end of my senior year. So this was actually mm -hmm. way before I was really thinking about the MCAT. <laughs> Um, so I'll try to speak to it as best as I can. But um, yeah, I think when you're starting out as a junior, you're kind of making that decision of when am I going to take it? If you are a junior, that is enough time for you to kind of figure out if you want to take the MCAT, go straight through to med school, apply by your senior year, so on and so forth. So there is more of a tight timeline um, in that sense in terms of just getting your prereqs done, thinking about like what all needs to be in place before you start studying for the MCAT and how to balance that with school at the same time. So there's a lot to think about. Definitely a scary thing. And we'll try and break it down today um, as we discuss. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the fact that a junior could be a couple different people, right? So let's let's recognize that fact right off the bat. It could yeah. be someone who's like, oh, ever since I was six, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. And they're, they've gone to undergrad knowing they wanted to be a doctor. Or it could be someone who was like, I'm going to be an architect. And then sophomore <laughs> year, they're like, I don't want to be an architect. What do I want to do now? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll be a doctor. I like science. I want to help people. So why not be a doctor? Uh, so right off the bat, right, there are different people who we need to speak to. Maybe sure. or maybe not. Maybe it's the same for whether you're starting out or not. But my assumption is if it's the if it's the architect who's like, mm -hmm. I think I want to be a doctor now and it's junior year, maybe we would consider them a freshman. Like you need to go get your prereqs, you need to go get all <laughs> that other stuff. Come back to us in a little bit of time. What would, would you like maybe push them aside and go go back and listen to the the freshman or sophomore version of this episode? <laughs> I think I would. Um, only to say that the MCAT, of course, there are sections that you can self-study for. Like you can learn biochem on your own. You can learn psych social on your own if you really, really need to. Mm -hmm. But it just makes it a lot harder, right? The activation energy then is a lot higher for you to learn the, the material. Activation <laughs> energy. You are nerding out right now. All right. <laughs> What can why I why not the coefficient of friction is much higher. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Only if it's opposing the direction of energy, uh, the direction of movement. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think uh, if you haven't taken a lot of prereqs and if you are making that kind of mid-college career switch, then there are things to think about. Like, can I reasonably take the bulk of my MCAT prereqs before I sit down for the MCAT? Because doing that will just make your life easier, right? So studying for the MCAT, I like to tell my students like, yes, half of it is content prep and like half of it is just knowing your stuff, but there's a whole other half of it that is more of like the, can you logic your way through the MCAT? Do you understand how it asks questions? Can you predict? Can you recognize these patterns? And um, so there's kind of two parts of, uh, two arms, I guess, to MCAT prep um, and you need time for both of them. So if you're spending the bulk of your time trying to catch up on the content that might get you halfway there, but maybe won't push you over the edge to where you need to be in a certain timeline. Yeah. So if, if we're thinking about someone who has those prereqs mm -hmm. there, uh, they, they started undergrad with a science major. Maybe they didn't know what they wanted to do, but they realized they want to be a doctor, but they got their prereqs. The, the time is coming, right? Winter is coming uh, right. to, to take the MCAT uh, and we typically take it junior year-ish time frame. Um, let's talk about what these students should be doing, 
Hopefully they've started preparing, but maybe they haven't. Mm -hmm. What are first steps for someone who is trying to be a quote unquote traditional student, apply that that summer of their junior year Mm -hmm. with the understanding that ideally they're taking the MCAT before then Mm -hmm. and and maybe they're, they're a little bit behind the ball to get started here? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So we can kind of work backwards, I think. So um, the MCAT or the med school application timeline, the primary apps are due basically beginning of June. Sometimes they release it a few days early at the end of May. So you would have to apply the June after your junior year, essentially. Um, MCAT scores take about a month to get back to you. So ideally, if you're really cutting it down to the wire, you get you take your MCAT, prep your application, submit it as soon as um, it opens in June then you'd have to take it kind of by beginning of May, end of April, right? So we usually say that end of April is the last date in order to take your MCAT, get your scores back, and still be able to apply and be in that early lump of applicants during the application cycle. So we're shooting for like taking the MCAT by April of your junior year. That's not really including any wiggle room in case you're not sure if you're going to score in your ideal target range, if you'll need more time to retake and kind of reevaluate things like that. So April, end of April is kind of that last um, last time to take your MCAT by. And then most students, especially if you are um, in school at the same time, most students take somewhere from three to six months to study. So if we work backwards from there, that's starting January, maybe up until October, November, if you're yeah. getting- more time. And so, yeah, this is definitely the time to really start thinking about like, what is my study schedule going to look like? When do I want to take the MCAT? Um, A lot of it does depend on like how heavy your course load is, what prereqs you've taken at that time. So yeah, sometime between this October, January range is where we want to really be setting that study schedule, laying our plans down. Yeah. And and so when you, when you think about it and, and it's just so weird, like it, it, took me forever to like try to understand a school calendar year of like fall and spring and what do those mean and I I didn't understand that for the longest time for some reason it just never clicked with my brain like Mm -hmm. show me some NMR spectroscopy and I'm like I know what that structure is like right off the bat (laughs) tell me what fall of whatever like I'm like when is that in the calendar I don't understand but but thinking about it now Starting junior year, right? Just a typical timeline. You're in the fall of that year, so it's kind of August September ish time frame, moving into late August September to start that academic year. Yeah. And now you're saying, wait a minute, you should start studying in like October, maybe September. And it's like <laughs> uh, that. That's like almost immediate. So. If if a student really isn't on top of things, and hopefully they're listening to this podcast, and they are, uh, it's very easy to get behind the eight ball quickly, isn't it? Absolutely. Especially, like, we've all been in school at some point or another. We know that <laughs> midterms come up and finals come up, and school just gets busy. You have projects, you have research, you have other things going on. And so, life and friends and yeah, exactly. boyfriends and girlfriends and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> oh, that, <okay. laughs> um, yeah, so things do catch up really quickly, which is why it's so important to just establish a study plan early on and do your best to like hold yourself accountable and stick to it. Because mm-hmm. um, if not for that, I think it's really easy to let things slip and kind of push push studying back for the MCAT until you're like two months out and you're like, ah, shoot, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard. Okay, mm-hmm. so... So a student uh, understands, okay, I'm starting my junior year now. It's September. I know right around the corner, if if I want to apply to medical school, be a traditional student, go straight from undergrad, take take that kind of summer off, and then start medical school, I, I'm going to have to get going. What is the first step for someone says, okay, I'm on it. I know this is what I need to do. My prereqs are all lined up. I, I've taken them all. Maybe I'm kind of finishing physics too and, and the ones yeah. that we don't need. Um, what What's the first step that someone should be doing? Is it is it going to Blueprint MCAT, getting a free account, go get that study planner yeah. tool just to kind of visualize everything in front of them? or Or is it just go buy a set of books and just start cramming content review? Yeah, so I, I think it's definitely worth for everyone to, at the beginning of studying, set 
aside like a day or two just to go through like potential resources like what because MCAT stuff is expensive right um whether it's the WMC prep hub whether it's blueprint whether it's Kaplan or Princeton review it it's an investment for sure um and so I think taking a few like a day or two just to go through like what resources do I want to use and like what resources can I feasibly finish and actually use maximally in the time that I have. Um, and so whether that is like checking out a free blueprint account and like seeing if the study schedule and the videos that are there are going to be helpful for you and maybe more amenable to your learning style. Um, or if that's exploring other resources. Um, I think that first week of figuring out MCAT uh, prep is also, it's super important to take your diagnostic. Um, so whether you can, there's so many diagnostics out there, you can take blueprints, you can take anyone else's, um, but get getting a baseline score of like, where am I currently? You can compare that to where you you want your target score to be. And that also sets more of a framework for like, how much time do I actually need? Am I going to be closer to that three months mark? Or am I going to be closer to that six months mark? Um, and kind of organizing your time based off of like where you are now and where you need to go. But Dorothy, mm -hmm. if I take the diagnostic right now, yeah, without opening an MCAT book, without uh, studying for the MCAT, I'm gonna do poorly, and that's gonna reflect poorly on me, and it's gonna freak me out, and I'm gonna want to delay the, my MCAT because I don't want to look at it because I feel like I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> that's that seems counterintuitive. Why why is it a good idea to take the diagnostic, even though we know you're probably going yeah. to do poorly on it? Yeah, um, I definitely remember this thought pattern when I was starting out. Um, I think it took me two weeks to take my diagnostic. <laughs> I was like, let me at least get a little bit of content prep in. Um, but it's actually really important just to take it early, knowing that you won't necessarily have all the content. So that's OK. But just so you know what you're getting into, right? The MCAT is double the length of your diagnostic. So it's even it requires even more stamina and more focus than the diagnostic does. But even sitting down for a diagnostic, it's a four hour test. It's very long. It goes through all the sections. Um, but it helps give you an idea of what each section is going to look like. Like what type of passages are we going to see in cars? Are they as boring as I've been told? Yes, they are. <laughs> um, like what types of concepts are we going to be tested in our science sections? Um, what types of questions are being asked? Right. So getting yourself a head start in terms of thinking in the same logic as the MCAT and being exposed to that early is really helpful for then framing how you're going to study the content once you get to it. All right, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna put my <laughs> ego aside, go take the MCAT diagnostic, blueprint MCAT diagnostic, and even if I get that 490, I'm like, this is not me. This is just <laughs> uh, this is just practice. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. ignore the score and just use this as as practice to understand what I'm about to embark on. That's that's the right attitude. Absolutely, it's definitely just practice understanding like what the MCAT's going to look like. Um, I think a lot of students fall into the trap of thinking like, oh, I just took my prereqs. I should be flying through on all the content. I'm going to be <laughs> great. The MCAT's going to be easy. Um, yeah. And yes, it is awesome to have that solid content foundation, but oftentimes students find that that's not quite enough. You do have to learn the logic of the exam. And that's just something that takes time and practice and helps you get a better sense of like what type of timeline you're looking at for studying. Yeah. So in, in terms of prereqs, I had mentioned earlier, like, oh, maybe I'm finishing up physics two, whatever. It's it's pretty fast. This, this comes pretty fast when you're about to start studying for the MCAT, right? We're only four semesters into school. We're starting our fifth semester. If, if we're talking traditional semesters here of uh, freshman fall and spring, sophomore fall and spring, and now it's like junior fall. It's like, oh, my gosh, here we go. <laughs> uh, a lot of times, depending on the student's institution, their major and minors and whatever else, uh, a lot of times they're they're short, like two, maybe three different prereqs. Maybe it's OCHEM 2 or Physics 2 or Biochem even. How should mm -hmm. a student evaluate, uh-oh, I can't take the MCAT yet? N not like the AAMC won't let you, but like I shouldn't take the MCAT yet. I have too many prereqs that I haven't done. What is that kind of go, no go point there? Yeah, no, that's a tough one to answer. I think um, a lot of students do end up self-studying things like psych -soch. Um, There is a lot of content there, um, but it is psych by nature is stuff that you're a little bit more 
accustomed to seeing play out in real life, right? You understand how society works, how people tend to think just through your own interactions. And so psych search can be one of the easier ones to self-study. Um, I think generally would recommend for people who are looking to take the MCAT as a junior, trying to fit in biochem by fall of junior year. So taking it fall of junior year is totally fine. You'll be done with it by the time you sit down for the MCAT. Um, but kind of thinking through like general yield of the um, general yield of the exam. Gen bio is really important. You want to be done with both gen bio one and two. Um, gen chem is also really important. You want to take both one and two. Um, general physics, at least one, I think is really important. Yeah. Um, for gen physics two, depending on your school, um, there are optics and fluids and electromagnetism on the MCAT. So those are tougher topics by nature would be ideal to take both physics one and two. But if you need to, certainly prioritize taking physics one by that time. And then of course, OCHEM. I think OCHEM one honestly is generally sufficient. Um, over time, the MCAT has definitely scaled down a little bit on the amount of OCHEM that's been covered on the test. Um, and then just kind of self-studying the other OCHEM two um, content that's on there. So as like the most pared down version, like Gen Bio 1 and 2, Gen Chem 1 and 2, OCHEM 1, Gen Physics 1, ideally Gen Physics 2, and then Biochem are the ones to prioritize fitting in. So if you are, you know, um, if you are one of those people who are lucky enough to start out college and know that you are maybe interested in science or pre-med, generally that does follow the pattern of what you'd be taking anyways. But it can definitely be a hard decision if you are several prereqs down trying to take the MCAT in that certain timeline. It just means you have a lot more to self-study. Yeah. What about the the kind of unwritten prereqs, maybe like a genetics or cell bio or stats or A and P? Yeah. So if you if you are if you have all the basic prereqs and those are the ones that you're missing, I wouldn't say that you need to push back your MCAT timeline necessarily. Of course, those are things that will help you and make the bio biochem sections easier for you. Um, but those are also things that can be self-studied um, or that you'll get a little bit here and there with gen bio and biochem by nature as well. So we've talked a lot about the, the do's here. What are the don'ts? What is something that a student should avoid when starting their MCAT journey, especially as a third year student here? Yeah, um, I think it's really important to not sacrifice practice for content review. Um, as I mentioned earlier a little bit, I kind of fell into the trap of like, oh, I need to do all my content and learn everything before I can start practice. And that ultimately did not really help me that much. So early practice, even if it's just a passage or two every day, just again, exposing yourself to the logic of the MCAT, understanding what types of content you need to apply to what situations. Um, so early practice, um, even if you are actively in that phase of content prep, is I, I think is really important. Um, so I tell my students to practice one or two passages in at least two sections every day, even like starting out um, while they're still actively doing a lot of content prep. And then of course, the second half of your prep period, once you are more well versed in the content, it's going to be primarily practice oriented and just reviewing that practice, learning as much as you can from your practice and then move, applying that forward. Um, so that's one big one. So again, don't sacrifice practice for content review. Yep. Um, yeah, and in line with that, don't start out with only content review, um, I think is the big, the big <laughs> takeaway for sure. Yeah. All right, so that was a lot to digest for a third year student, a junior who is starting their MCAT journey. Uh, our next episode will wrap up our kind of starting the MCAT prep journey with non-trad students. Mm -hmm. What kind of final words of wisdom, motivation do you want to give our third years out there listening to this going, I don't know if I can do this. The MCAT's really hard. <laughs> it's really intimidating. I'm, I'll never be a doctor. I, I know I had those thoughts. Oh yeah, me too. Um, I remember like the first week after I actually had sat down with my resources and was like, oh my gosh, I have to do all of this by three months from now. It was pretty terrifying. Um, I think the one thing I will say is like, you can do it. I think the organization and structure that you can do early on is going to help you a lot with just mapping out what resources you're going to use, when you're going to use each, like what each week will look like. Um, so setting those like smaller goals for like on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis can make this really overwhelming thing be a lot more approachable, um, at least in the day-to-day. -day. And I think just take one day at a time and um, keep at it. Consistency is really key. Um, and as long as you keep practicing and reflecting on that and learning from it, you'll get there for sure.